But I'm going to share with you a little bit about what I do, um, the heart behind hospitality, what I feel it means, and why I feel like it's so important um, for those of us in the ministry and to support those in the ministry, those of us that are in that supportive role and in that administrative role. So um, right now, I just want to open in prayer really quick. Um, Father God, I just, I just thank you for this time that we have together, Lord. Would you just bless it? Would you be in every word that is spoken, God? I pray refreshing and wisdom and fresh ideas, God, of every person here today. We love you, Father. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay. So, um, put my reading glasses on. Okay, so my plan today was I was going to just give you a few practical tools to help guide you in your preparation for hosting guests, and I certainly plan on doing that, but what I really felt um, just as I was praying and just studying a little bit um, that God really wanted me to share the heart behind serving, and that's what's most important to me. It's not so much the work of the ministry and the, um, the process um, of ministry, but it's really the heart behind ministry. And all of you that are administrators, I just want you to be encouraged today. You do ministry. What you do is so valued and so important to be that support staff, to allow your pastors to do what they do. They could not do it without you. So I want you to be encouraged in that. Um, so a couple scriptures I know we're all familiar with. Um, Colossians 3.23 Work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. And, and Philippians 2.3, don't do anything for selfish purposes, but with humility, think of others as better than yourself. Um, and I was kind of chuckling as I was reading these verses because I know them really well and I think about it like as a mom. Okay, so let's just say um, these verses were on my refrigerator a lot. Um, and I know many of the moms in the room probably can understand. I'm going to give you just a couple examples. Um, so some of the things that I would say to my kids, and I know you all do it. It's not just me, okay? Clean your room. Remember, you're doing this as unto the Lord. Um, and another one was, like, don't fight with your brother. I have four boys. So there was a lot of um, rowdiness and loudness and some brutality in our, in our house. <laughs> I mean, four boys, you got to keep them under control. Um, but anyway, I would always say, you need to think more highly of him than yourself. And then, of course, I would get that look, and they would argue with me, and I would say, you better honor your father and mother if you want to live a long life. Um, so, um, but no, it's, it's, yeah, so seriously, though. Okay, um, but one of the best depictions that I thought of servanthood in the Bible um, that most resonates with me, and I think a lot of us, is the story of Mary and Martha. I love it. Um, so, what do we think of when we think of Martha? She was a doer. She was a server. I would call her a hostess with the mostess. So, um, she was one of those, those ladies, right? That I can just imagine that if anyone wanted something to get done, and they wanted to get done right, they would say, we'll ask Martha to do it. She wanted everything to be just perfect for Jesus' arrival. She wanted the best meal prepared, the house clean, the table set, everything in its place. And then what do we think of when we think of Mary? While Martha was cooking and cleaning, Mary was probably peering out the window, just waiting to catch a glimpse of Jesus just coming down the road. As he approached, she probably opened the door for him, closed the door behind him, grabbed a chair for him to sit in, and then she just sat at his feet and talked to him and hung on his every word. So when I think of Mary and Martha, what I love about these two sisters is just not so much the contrast in the person personality of who they were, but what they did and, and how each of them related to Jesus. It was the posture of their heart. One Mary was to sit at his feet, to spend time with him, to listen to his words, and then the other was Martha to serve him, to present her home, a reflection of herself to him. And I would say to you, we need to do both. 
We need to serve others as if we're serving Jesus, but more importantly, we need to sit at the feet of Jesus. We need to listen to his voice, and we need to hang on his every word so that we're able to serve others, but more importantly, so that we want to serve others. Amen? Okay. Um, so I am passionate about serving people. I am passionate about serving people and serving them well. Nothing brings me more joy than when I get feedback when people have been here at Radiant and they express how much they felt honored when they were here. Um, and and it, it were, we value hospitality here. Um, and I just wanted you to know that hospitality to me is not difficult. I know a lot of people you know, will come up to me and say, gosh, how do you do that? And how do you do what you do? And Radiant is so excellent in everything they, that they do. And I just want you to know that it's not difficult. It doesn't cost you anything and it doesn't require a special gifting for, for people to leave you feeling cared for. Um, now, that's not to say that hospitality is not a gift, because I do believe that it is. I believe some of us have just a natural gift of hospitality. Um, and I love the fact that we value hospitality um, above all else, like hospitality and excellence. That's just one of the things that Radiant is known for. I think we should all be known for. Um, it is always our intention that everyone that walks through the doors of Radiant, whether it's our guests on the weekend, our guest speakers, someone coming in for a meeting, the goal is they always feel welcomed and they feel cared for by us. Um, so what I, and again, I wanted to say you don't have to have the gift, gift of hospitality to be hospitable. The definition of hospitable is being friendly and welcoming to strangers or guests. Um, other synonyms are welcome, friendly, helpful, accommodating, warm-hearted, and kind. So I think we all have the ability to do that, right? Okay, so today I'm gonna give you a couple practical things that we use here. So hopefully this will be helpful to you, especially those of you that are in ministry. I'm just gonna give you a few things that we use, some tools that we use that really help us to serve people and to honor them well. But first I wanna talk a little bit specifically about when you have a guest come. So 1 Timothy 5.17 tells us the elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. So it's important to honor those whom you've invited to speak to your congregation, right? They are imparting God's words over you and for your people. And so you want to be sure that you serve them well while they're in your house. And this is how you do that. So I have just three simple points that I thought of that I wanted to share with you um, that will help you kind of format how you would go about doing that. Um, and they're invite, inform, and impact. Okay, so in my experience, many times Pastor Lee will send a text message or a phone call and he'll invite a guest. And this is great. It's great that he does that because most of the people that he invites, he has relationship with. So, but I would implore you to not let it go any further than that and don't expect it to go any further than that. Do not rely on your pastor to make the plans and the preparations for a guest speaker at your church, okay? Um, so, and if you're an administrator, you kind of know that, Ruth, right? <laughs> um, yes, always follow up. Always. So let them make that, that initial contact based on that relationship, and then you just kind of take over. Um, I know that many churches don't have staffing to delegate planning for a guest speaker, and that's great. Ask a trusted volunteer. I am big on delegation. Like, you find that person that just has that, that gift or that sparkle or even just they just want to help. They're like, hey, whatever I can do, let me know. And then equip them to be able to run with that. Ask a trusted volunteer that has a gift of hospitality, um, and, and they'll be honored to do that. Um, so in, invite, this is what I typically will do. So you wanna follow up with a formal invite that includes the date, time, and location. So I'll usually send out an email, usually to the assistant or to a guest speaker, 
And with this initial info, I'll ask for a current picture, a bio, a W-9. I'm getting very specific with you guys, so I hope you're, you appreciate this. Um, I will also ask them to fill out a guest speaker form. So here's where I'm gonna show you a little practical tool that I don't know if you'd be familiar with, but what we use is something called Wufu. And it is just that, it's a, it's a form template that you can build yourself. And really, it takes all the guesswork out of it for you. So I build this, um, this form and then I send it to them and I ask them to fill it out. And what this alleviates is all the back and forth of email. Because how many times do you know that something gets lost in a thread. You know, they're like, oh, I sent that to you. And you're like searching your email all day long and you get that initial panic like, oh shoot, she sent it to me. How did I not get it? So this will alleviate that for you. So you just ask for very basic things, their name, all of the um, questions that, the follow-up questions. I ask, is their spouse gonna attend? If their children will be attending, all the right contact numbers and email. I ask them if they have special snacks or hobbies um, for their assistant's name, really important. That's typically who you will be communicating with is an administrator. Um, let's see, what else do I have? If you have additional guests, I ask for all the transportation information, which is really important. Um, any notes that they have, like literally everything is in this one form, so you can just go right back to it. And then what I, and what this also allows me to do is for our team, I can just forward this to them because it has all that information. It has the information for the notes and if they, you know, they, their microphone preference, like every detail. And then I make it required so that they can't send me a partial form and then I don't have to keep following up. So all of that, as you can see, microphone preference, stage needs. Um, I do a guest speaker release form so that they're signing off saying, yes, I'm your guest speaker. You can take photos of me. We understand that you do recording and live stream. And, and then they submit it. So I have that. I've got all of their information. So that's part of the invite process. Um, the next is inform. So, They've sent me all this information, and then what I do is I email them back, usually about two to three weeks before they arrive, and I'll go over the form, send out an email if I do need any more information that they didn't include, um, especially the travel info. So then what I do is I take all of this information, and then I put it into another form, which is our itinerary. So here, I will send them an itinerary giving them the information they've given me, which is their travel, how many travelers are going, um, going to be coming with them. Most of the time they'll, you know, a pastor will have an armor bearer, some that he's traveling with or a spouse. I'll put their flight information, the hotel that we book. So the way that we do it and the way that it works really the best, I believe, is if they book their own flight, and then you can reimburse them. They send you the flight information and based on when they arrive and when they leave is how you book their hotel. So we always book the hotel and we call, we call them, we get special rates. I would always suggest doing that. If you have guests, um, make sure that you can talk with a, a hotel and they're always happy to give you a special rate. Um, I put, when they're speaking, their itinerary, like down to the detail. So if you see here, like four o'clock, they're gonna check into their hotel on a Friday, and then on a Saturday, I'm gonna have their green room open for them, sound check, what time service begins, if they're having dinner afterwards, usually I'll include who's gonna be taking them to dinner, what pastor. And then the same thing for a Sunday service, so we have Saturday and Sunday, so you can see that there. Then, this is really important, I always put contact information of who, who will be contacting them. So I always assign a host, and then that host is the one that will connect with them. I always leave my number, um, because if they have any questions, I can usually answer them. Um, so that's the inform piece. So again, include all info, travel related, flight related. It's just super important that they have all the information they need. And honestly, you guys, the goal is just for them to feel confident 
confident in your communication, confident when they come walking through your church. They know exactly what to expect. Um, and then the third that I want to go over with you is impact. And this is the one that I feel is the most important. So we know that when a guest comes to speak, they've prepared, they've prayed, and they've taken time to bless us and our congregation. We need to be even more of a blessing to them by preparing, by praying, and taking time to serve them well while they're with us. And here, so this is, this is where the whole Mary-Martha balance comes into play for me, and I think it should for all of us, is I prepare what my table spread's going to look like, how I want my dishes set, what my menu is going to be based on their likes, their feedback that they've given me, but most importantly, I pray. I pray that God will give me creative ideas. I pray that God will protect them in their travel. I pray that the Holy Spirit is speaking to them as they prepare to come to our church, that God will give them a now word for our church. I pray that everyone in the congregation that is listening to that guest, that it, that it hits home with them. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, again, it's so much not just about the work of the ministry, but when you're preparing, you're, do, you're doing ministry. You're serving these people. And it's just so important that they feel that, that they feel that honor when they come here and they know that we've prepared and that we've prayed just as they have. Um, so that's, I mean, that's always my, my prayer, is I want them to feel loved and blessed by us when they're with us. Um, so this is how this part typically plays out in a practical way. So I try to set them at ease with the itinerary and thoroughly communicating where they will go once they arrive at the church. We reserve a parking space for them. We designate a host. If it isn't me or if it isn't Pastor Lee that's meeting them directly, we always make sure they have a contact when they walk through the door. Um, I set up a green room space for them so that they have a place to relax and to land. I will have refreshments available. That's why I ask on that guest speaker form, like if they have any dietary restrictions um, or if they, you know, if they have just special things that they like. And I just make sure those are in their green room. Um, and, and what I do is I just, I, I just get a variety of small things. And I know a lot of times when people come into your green room, if you're familiar with this, sometimes they don't, they just, they don't eat anything that you put out, but you know, <laughs> then, you know, the staff gets it and they love it. <laughs> so they're like, what are you putting in the green room tonight? <laughs> right, Thane? He remembers. <laughs> and then they leave and then the staff comes in and, you know, so we love when guest speakers come. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and so I, and I and I also I like I don't. This is just a this is just a big thing for me. It's a big pet peeve of mine. But I don't use plastic and I don't use styrofoam. And just I just you know I wouldn't invite someone to my home for a nice dinner and then feed them on plasticware. So not to say I know there's a lot of nice plasticware out there. I get that. Um, but I just invest in a couple nice dishes and that's what I use for my green room. And I just you know everybody knows those are Christmas dishes. Don't use them. Or if you use them, they they need to go right back where they came from. Um, so I I try to have really nice things to to present to them. Um, another thing that I think is really important, I would stress this with everyone, is a gift basket. And it, again, you know, every church is different, every budget is different. But just something that says, welcome, we're thinking of you, we are so glad you're here with us, um, is just such a nice touch. And I like to have it there in the hotel so that when they arrive, they walk in and they're like, oh, wow. And we get a lot of feedback on that. Mm -hmm. And again, it doesn't have to be elaborate. And it can be just the little things that they like. If their wife is coming with them, I'll throw a candle in there or a nice scarf, you know, something for her as well. And um, if their kids are coming, I like put some fun age appropriate things. I have four boys. When people come with girls, I love it. I get to shop <laughs> for girls. I get to put girly things in there. And it's just, it's like my favorite thing to do. Um, 
easy things, a Starbucks coffee gift card, everybody loves that. It just, just something that says, hey, we appreciate you and welcome. Um, if you guys are in a church that you have your own like bookstore and merch, I always do that. I'll throw in like a radiant mug or a radiant sweatshirt, um, you know, really cool things. Um, funny story, so I was, I think it was our first guest here, and it, it was actually, it was Jimmy Evans. And so I really wanted a nice basket for him. So you all know Jimmy, and he likes to golf. So I'm at a sporting goods store, and I'm in the golf section, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, he probably has a, a glove, and he probably has golf balls, and he has all this stuff. So there's other gentlemen there, and so I leaned over to him, and I'm like, hey, you golf? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> there's your sign. Um, and... I said, I want the best golf ball. Like, can you, you know, tell me what the, get the best golf ball is? And he's like, yeah, sure. And he tells me what golf ball. And so I'm looking for him. I can't find him anywhere. So I go up to one of the, the customer service, <laughs> service people and I'm like, hey, I'm looking for this golf ball. And he's like, oh, yeah, we keep those in the back. Oh, and I'm thinking, oh, oh okay. <laughs> so I got the golf balls. And let's just say he was so impressed. <laughs> so impressed. And um, yeah, and it was a little bit. It was a little bit, but I was super excited. And so he had that, and I put like a really cool cap in there. And so just things like that. Like I honestly will like stalk people on Instagram <laughs> to see what they like or what they're reading or what authors they like. And it's just make such an impact because they know that you care and you're thinking about them. It's not just, just some random, like, you know, Cheez-Its and mints. It's like, oh, wow, they really know what I like. When Lisa Bevere came here, I w went through all her pictures to see, like, what kind of jewelry she wore. And so she wears really cool bangles. I went to, like, a women's boutique, and I got some really cool bangles, and she was just like, I love this. So it just makes such an impact. And then the next time you ask them to come, they're like, absolutely, I will be there. What day, what time, I'm coming. So, so anyway, um, so just one more thing that I want to impart on you guys that I think is really important, and I'm sure you probably all know, is just make sure that you always give them an, an honorarium. Um, to those that are traveling to speak with you, they're leaving their families, they're leaving their churches, they're, they're prioritizing you in their schedule. And just let me tell you from someone who works for a really, really busy pastor, he cannot go everywhere. He can't answer every invite, even though it's in his heart to do it. So when he does it, we are very strategic about going over his calendar. And when he leaves, it's not always easy. It's just like, I need to be there. I need to speak to them. And we make it work. And so um, an honorarium is just something that says, thank you, thank you for investing in us, thank you in, for investing in our house and giving us a now word for our church. So that, my friends, is every little bit of kernels of knowledge that I have for you. Um, but really what I wanted to do in, this, in our time, because I think this is really important, and like I had told you before, I don't typically speak to big groups of people on hospitality. I do a lot of one-on-one. -on -one, and when I do that, people like to ask me specific questions about, well, what about this or what about that scenario? So that is what I would really love to do right now is hear from you, maybe what you do, and answer some of your questions. So with that being said, questions, yes? To our pastors. Okay. So I, I, I know Pastor, and Leo, Pastor Lee and Jane say that I take care of them very well. And I do. Honestly, they're like family to me. Um, so I take care of them like I would take care of my own family. And a lot of that is just in um, being available. Um, I think that's key. Um, you know, you do have your own family, so you have, always have to pro prioritize that as well. But um, again, it's being attentive. I'm attentive to details. I think that's really important. Um, I pay attention to what they like and what they don't like. Um, and for birthdays, it's really hard to buy for somebody that can, you know, that just kind of 
buys what they want or needs when they need it. So I try to give gifts that are meaningful, that I know that you know it's something that they love to do. Pastor Lee loves to read, so I don't ever buy him a book because he probably bu he buys his own books and Bibles. But um, I would say, you know, you just need to really be available for them and support them. I. I myself don't do anything on Sundays just because we have a great staff here and he has a security team and so I'm not required to be here on the weekends. I know it's, that's not the, the way it is at a lot of other churches um, and we have more than one campus so I'm at, actually at a different campus during the weekend. I'm not at Richland. I'm only here during the week. Um, but there are times that I'm here so if we have a guest speaker then yes, I'm here. You know, I help him with with reminders I do lots of reminders especially for his calendar his calendar gets super busy um, one of the things that I really feel is important and it's a fine line I try not to overstep that line is protecting his time um, I think it's really important to help your pastor protect their time because that's their job is to pastor people and they want to pastor it well and sometimes uh, they over pastor if that's the thing <laughs> so um, and they don't want to disappoint people and they want to be able to answer everything and so there's times where you just have to say you you, you shouldn't do that you can't do that <laughs> so um, I do try to protect his time a lot and I think that's one of the greatest things that you can help them do is just keep track of that calendar for them and just say hey listen I know you really want to go speak here but you know what you did this on this weekend and you've got you know, you've got an elders meeting here, and you've got you're going away on this weekend, and you've got you've got to teach staff on Tuesday, and that all adds up, and then that can result in burnout. So I think the more people that they have around them, surrounding them to help protect that time, uh, is really key. Yeah. Yes. So our church is, is new. I mean, brought you in a half old, so we're really not at the point where we're having guest speakers and have the money to put gift baskets everywhere and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what ways can we get our hospitality team to really uh, help them, the new uh, members come in and feel really welcome and really cared for and really loved beyond the, it's nice to have you here, here's a coffee mug. Right. You know, how do we really get in our hospitality team engaged in all the new members that are coming mm -hmm. So again, I'm going to say um, the details. So have them remember somebody when they come in. I'm gonna tell you what speaks more to people is when you remember their story and you ask them about it. If they're, if, if they're meeting you for the first time and, they, and you're praying for them and maybe you're praying for, for a son or a daughter of theirs, the next time they come, like, hey, how's your daughter doing? Anything else I can be praying for you? And it's intentional, because it's hard. I mean, it's hard. you meet so many people on a weekend but if you, can just, if you can just determine in your heart, you know what, I'm gonna remember that one person. And in my, in my week, I'm gonna pray for that person. And then I'm gonna find them next Sunday and I'm gonna ask them, hey, how's that going? Did you get that job? Did you get that promotion? I was praying for you this week. I'm telling you, that means more than that mug. Yeah. Yeah. And they do it, they turn in these prayer cards, which is nice. So yes. they kind of read their story, but they're not always comfortable telling you what their need is face-to-face -face and kind of like, oh, sure, you know? Absolutely, but you know what? In that moment, just a phone call saying, hey, I was praying for you today. I'll even text people, I ask them if it's okay. But if I have that number on a prayer card, because I'm on the prayer team as well, and I have that number, I'll just say, hey, do you mind if I text you in the middle of the week? You don't even have to call them. Just a quick moment, a quick text. Hey, thinking about you today, praying for you, anything I can encourage you in. That goes a long way with people, yep. They know they're not just another person breezing in and breezing out of your congregation, that you care. Yeah. Did you have something? I didn't really have a question, but if it's okay to do, I was going to add on to, to her. Absolutely. So I always have tried to, if it's not something or someone that I can personally relate to, I've always tried to find a way to, to you know, find something out about the person. And I know people in my church, so I connect them to someone else that maybe I personally don't have, you know, that specific connection with someone who maybe has a sick baby or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And I connect them to someone in my church who 
they would have a good connection with and then they had a not so close to build relationship as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Or refer them to a, like a, a community group. We do that as well. So anytime you can refer those people just to some to another support source for them is really great. Did I see Jen? Um, when you get hotel rooms for your guests, do you always use the same hotel usually? Yes. Okay. I try. Is there a way to? Um, Maybe you can tell me who I would contact in the hotel to set up like an account with them because I every time we have guests I have to go in and sign a credit card release form. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they won't let me fax it, so I have to like physically yeah. go there every time. Is that something you have to do too, or is there a way to set up like an account with the hotel? You should be able to, and they you should be able to authorize that they keep that on file. Okay. The other thing that I would suggest, and most hotels have this now, is they have like a reservation specialist. Okay. So I don't call the front desk ever. Okay. I email my gal, and then okay. she gets my reservation for me. And if you can make that personal connection, and I would say do that in several different places, not just in at hotels. Okay. And again, uh, just another, another form of hospitality. So the girl that does the reservations for us at the Radisson, when she had her baby, I got her a baby basket and I got I went and bought her some gifts and I came to the hotel and I got her a gift as well and just that relationship and those connections goes a long way because we had a we had a little bit of a rocky road kind of starting where you know sometimes I would get a reservation and it wasn't quite right or I would drop off a gift basket and sometimes it would get to the room and sometimes it wouldn't get to the room and it was getting a little bit frustrating because we have a standard of excellence so I had um, a really nice kind of firm conversation with someone okay. about excellence and the standard of excellence that we have and so we require the same standard of excellence and they were like oh yes absolutely and then they were, we're gonna connect you with this girl and she will be just your your reservation specialist and ever since then it's just been like just a like wonderful worst, relationship it's my worst fear to have a guest go in and go to check out and have to pay and have to pay time. yes <laughs> we had that happen and so i would say ask them if you can be assigned a reservation specialist okay. and that they keep your information on file and that they know that you know all all charges can be charged to the church and that that's that's what needs to happen each time and that's the you know the protocol going forward okay. but yeah I, yeah and it is those those personal connections go a long way with getting the you know the, that specialized treatment anybody else yeah yeah so I serve on the safety team here and one thing that Krista does to help Pastor Lee is she's always informed and she knows everything. So all, all she does, all the little questions that I see, I don't look for any pastor here. And there's a lot of them. I go to Krista or someone on the staff there with that. And then she uh, buffers not only his schedule from what I'm learning, but um, also there's a buffer between outside people coming in and trying to get to him. And I've seen her do that with such grace that is amazing where people will get turned away and they're happy. Thank you. I know, because somebody people like, what do you do? And I'm like, oh gosh. <laughs> How do I express what I do? But, yes. How do you create boundaries for yourself? Great question. <laughs> I love that. Um, I'm going to be really honest with you and say that I'm not the greatest at that. I've gotten better though. I've gotten a lot better. Um, I I just love to care for people, and so I tend to over over care for people and not for myself at times. So I have, but I've learned how to set those boundaries, and some of them have come from my own pastor saying, "Stop it! You need to set some boundaries." Um, I make sure when I'm home, I'm home. Um, I will turn my phone off. I will not answer my email. I'm not always good about not answering me, my email, but I'm better at not answering my email when I'm home. Um, I just, I have to have those, you have to set those boundaries and you have to stick to it. Um, more importantly, you have to let other people know that you have boundaries. 
So yep. you can't you can't be upset with someone if you've kind of conditioned them that you're always available, and then all of a sudden decide you're not going to be available, but you haven't communicated that. So I would say that is really key. Saying, hey, listen, um, from Friday at noon till Sunday at four, I'm 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 off the grid, um, and whatever that looks like for you. Um, set those boundaries, but make sure that you that you let people know because they don't they they'll honor and respect that, but you you have to communicate it to them. Thane. So obviously, not there's a lot of system, there's a lot of process to everything. For someone that's just getting started in all of this, how do you protect the guests from even maybe the own, your own staff from wanting to connect or have questions and stuff like that? How do you mm -hmm. funnel that? So you don't have a creative arts person, a production person, a worship person, a youth pastor. That's all coming like a Jimmy shows up. Everyone wants to be able to have a face to face with someone like Jimmy. How mm -hmm. do you funnel that to protect your guest time so that they're not sworn by mm -hmm. in house people? Yeah. So a lot of times with a guest like that, most of us kind of understand the protocol that we have. But I, I will have a meeting. I'll call a meeting with our whole team, and I'll say, like for a rise shine, I'm going to use this for an example. So we have a meeting and I say, listen guys, you know, um, the, the back offices are, are off limits for Monday and Tuesday. We're gonna have a lot of guests back there. We have elevation, we wanna respect their space. We wanna give them green room. Um, so I'm just gonna ask you guys to please not work in your offices on Monday and Tuesdays. Um, and then I tell them, and, and listen, attend the conference. That's what it's for. It's our gift to you. This is, this is your time as well to be refreshed. Mm -hmm. So a week, I kind of try to lighten it. I try to make it a positive thing. Like, hey, you can't go in your offices. Sorry, you're cut off. I, I, I roll that into a positive thing. Like, attend the conference. Like, be in the moment. Get, get you know, soak in the worship and listen to some good teaching um, with a guest. Um, I'll, I have that a lot. I have people that come in and they're like, oh, hey, can I just get a moment? Yeah. Just, just a quick moment. The problem is if you give everyone just a quick moment, it monopolizes their entire time. So you do have to be very careful and say, you know what, let me, let me see if he's available. Um, a lot of times I'll just tell people, I'm really sorry, Pastor Lee is, you know, his time is already committed and I, he just doesn't have time right now. Maybe we can connect later. Um, with our staff, same thing. I kind of kind of hang around. I have security that backs me up, which is great. We always have a conversation. They understand who can come back and who cannot. And we just we're just kind with people and just say, you know, I'm sorry, they're just they're just not available right now. Um, you know, you know, we have a large staff, and so that does happen. I mean, like with our worship team, you know, they feel like, hey, I'm on the worship team. I should be come be able to come back there and hang out with Elevation. And we have to say, I'm sorry. This is. You know, this is their space, and you guys can you know, come back at another time. So, yeah, hopefully that answered your question. It's, yeah. it's a, it's, it is a delicate thing, and you, yeah. you just have to make sure that people feel like they're walking away, not with not a negative, you know, negative response to you. So, anybody else? Yes. I, um, we have a hospitality ministry where we do meals for babies mm -hmm. or. Mm -hmm. Whatever in life that might be happening. Sure. You know. Do you guys, is, how do you work that? Do you guys do anything like that? Or do you, well, I know it's huge, but yeah. I, don't, I don't know. So what we've, what we've kind of gotten, gotten away from, well, I, I shouldn't say we've gotten away from, but we're moving towards, yeah. um, is now that we are so large, we really try to keep it within ministry departments. So if you have somebody that serves in your ministry, if it's a volunteer, um, if it's even part of your staff, like our, you know, our, even our staff departments have gotten quite large, um, we kind of keep it within that realm. Um, it's just, you know, what we've found is just everyone is so busy and it's just, it's, it's just a different generation where back, you know, um, maybe a couple years, or 10, 20 years yes. ago, it was just expected and it just happened and people would bring you a meal all the time. And we've kind of gotten away from that. And I think it's great that we have things like meal train and, and all of these different little you know programs that we can use that people can 
can fill out and, and even like send a gift card or send a, you know, a pizza or something. But we tend to put that on the actual ministries themselves and we inform them. And I have, I'm going to point out Laura in the back there. Laura is the campus administrator here and she is awesome at that. Like she keeps track of who's having babies on Facebook and who's sick and who's been in the hospital. And, and then she'll, and then she'll, you know, like send out an email and say, Hey guys, did you know so-and-so was in the hospital? And maybe they're on the worship team. So then we like make sure that everybody on the worship team is aware and that they're caring for people in their own department in their ministry. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Um, the form that Blue Food Yes, yes. Somebody copy that from you? Yep, okay. I sure can. I can, right. any of you, if you, you can email me, okay. um, and I will definitely send you any All of the right. forms that we have. Um, Wufu, again, I think it's the best form manager, manage, manager that we have found. We still keep it. We've gotten away from having several different platforms to kind of minimize our communication. This is one that we've kept. The other thing that I didn't mention that I'll just throw out there and I can give you more information on it is we have a project building software that we use and it works on all of our projects across all departments, all ministries. You can communicate through it. You can assign tasks through it is called Basecamp and we live and breathe Basecamp here at Radiant Church. So if there is any any other little little nugget that I can give you is to look into base camp. And I think it works for, I think it works like a lot of church software systems do where it's based on how many people use it. Yeah. Is that right, yeah. Thane? I thought so. Yeah. So it's, it, the cost is going to be different because of how many people you have on your team. So, okay. um, so they, they will work with people Smaller on that. Staff can be like Wonderlist. Yeah. Somewhere. Yep. So anybody else? Well, I hope that was helpful for you. Yes. I, I'm so honored. Thank you. So, thank you for letting me speak to you today. I'm gonna again.